I am so eager to know what your last few days have been like with the Apple Vision Pro. <sighs> so I went out, I got the headset, I came back, set it all up, and started to work with it. And you and I originally, because we have both flown across an ocean yep. to get our hands on one of these things, we were thinking like, ah, you know what we'll do? We'll get our hands on the headsets and just we'll immediately record like a first impressions episode of Cortex about the headsets. We're like, speed is king. We will go for speed above all else. Speed is the most important thing for our once monthly podcast. I just got to <laughs> do this right now. <laughs> and I think after like a couple of hours, I messaged you and I was like, hey, Mike, I just don't know. If I'm even going to be able to record our like fast hot take episode, because I had this feeling of I just cannot put into words what my experience is right now. Yeah. And you very graciously were like, yeah, yeah, it's no problem. Like we can wait a couple of well, days. No, I was in 100 percent agreement for the same reason. Oh, OK. OK. Great. I wanted to move it because I mm. felt like I didn't know what to say yet with like. 24 hours or whatever since then like my experience has been largely the same of like this is really hard to put into words and what has happened over the past couple of days is that i realized it was important to come to america for this for me not just because it's the only place on earth where you can get your hands on a headset but because I ended up combining this with a trip to see my parents. And so I have also had the experience of not just me trying to feel like, what does this headset mean to me? But I've also been having the experience of seeing my parents try the headset. And now my mom is like, she is the tippy top of the tech enthusiast pyramid. Like she is way up there, which is like very interested in technology. She's about as high of a power user as you can get before you reach the automation stage. Although, sidebar, she did just make her very first shortcut yes. all on her own without my help. And I like could not have been prouder. If one <laughs> could put shortcuts on the refrigerator, I would have done it. I, I was like, this is the most amazing <laughs> just, thing I've just seen. Just screenshot it and print it out, man. You know? <laughs> Never asked me for any help. She just decided, like, I'm going to figure out how to do this. It's like, ah, mom, that's amazing. So I was so happy. So that's where she is with computer use. Very, very interested. And then there's my dad, who falls into the category of normal person with computers. As in, the computer is a tool, he has some things that he wants it to do, and it does those things for him, and he's not on the enthusiast spectrum. So between my father, my mom, and me, we go from just like normal user to professional VR person all within the same household. That really helps solidify what is going on. Why is this hard to talk about? So when I had my mom first try it, it just so happened that she immediately stumbled into the uh, Haleakala environment where she's on top of a mountain in Hawaii. And just finding yourself there somewhat unexpectedly after just clicking a couple of buttons, she found that really shocking and emotionally moving as a person who had never been in that kind of virtual environment before. Mm. And it was really important for me to see that because it reminded me that unfortunately no one can be told what VR is. You just have to see it for yourself. And it was particularly fascinating with her because she has watched Every single video that Apple has produced about this product. She has been hearing me talk for years about VR, but absolutely none of that mattered when she got to experience something for the first time for herself that left her so stunned she needed the rest of the day just to process that moment, mm. as was exactly my experience the first time I ever tried something like this, where you just go, what has happened? Yeah. And so 
in putting together like my thoughts for this show, I realized there's just two conversations that we can have. There's a conversation about all of the technical details. There's a conversation about what works and what doesn't work, the limitations and possibilities. But all of that sort of doesn't matter because there's an experience and a conversation that just fundamentally can't be put into words. And that's what really matters. Mm. So that's like, ah, and it was really just this morning that like walking around and trying to think about it's like, that's what this is. My brain is split between these two things, like a ton of details that I just keep feeling like, ooh, I should be taking more notes on all of these details. These are all of the details that like we should be talking about. And then there's another part of me which is going, I don't really care about any of those details because the important parts of this experience are just so good and work so perfectly and can be so genuinely affecting that it almost feels silly to then talk about something like, let's discuss the resolution. Yeah. So that's how I've been feeling for the past several days. Yeah, and I obviously see where you're coming from, Like, because to take it in a slightly different direction, this feels like a version one product. Yes, yes, yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. It feels what it is, right? It feels like a version one product. There are bugs that mm -hmm. clearly shipped. There are weird interactions that shipped with mm -hmm. the idea that it will continue to get better. I mean, we're like four months away from probably seeing Vision OS 2 and whatever that's going to be at WWDC, right, to ship later on oh. in the year, right? <laughs> I didn't even think of that, yeah, yeah. And this product feels like a better version 1 to me than the Apple Watch did because version 1 Apple Watch was immediately you could see all the problems and those problems were pretty fundamental, right? Like it didn't have apps on the device. All of the data and information was coming from the iPhone. It was incredibly underpowered. Where the Vision Pro, those fundamental things seem to be taken care of, right? Like mm. native applications look and work great. The operating system is very well architected. There are just like little fringe parts of it that need work. Mm -hmm. That is very exciting to me that like the first version of this is as good as it is. Mm -hmm. Also the weirdness of it, the interesting parts of it and the overall how good the experience is is the thing I kind of can't get my head around. It is equally weird, interesting, and exciting that they even put it out. Mm. This is a crazy product for 2024 <laughs> Apple to make. Like, mm. And the more you use it, the more you realize that. Of like, oh, you're just really going for it. It's like mm. really expensive because it's really high end. But in doing that means they can do some really weird things. And like that's the route that they took. Like to really wow you and impress you. But then also you open up like the environments menu to choose these places you want to go. It's how you find Haleakala. And there are two of them that just say coming soon. It's like, what is happening? Like this is such a weird product, but that is what's exciting to me. Like they are willing to put this one out there, see how it goes. And like, that's what I want them to do. And it's what they've done. This is truly one of the most interesting things that I have seen in my career. I am very confident in saying that this is the single most interesting technology purchase I have ever made in my life. Okay. I use the word interesting for a reason. In my world, like things divide into it's like it's interesting or it's boring. But interesting doesn't always mean good, no. right? Things can be interesting for bad reasons. Yeah, it's the most interesting technology purchase I've ever made. And partly that is because it feels like a thing from the future in very many ways. You know, like seeing other people use it, it is the most futuristic feeling thing to watch somebody else use. As a small detail, that screen on the front when you are using this in an environment with multiple people... Mm -hmm. That screen on the front is real key. The fact that when, you know, my father is watching like the virtual tour of a rhinoceros farm and like he is having like that experience. And then from our perspective, we're looking at 
this kind of kaleidoscope moving lights on his face while that's happening. It's important that it's there, but it is also so future feeling and yes. like, oh, this looks like something that should be in a movie, the aesthetics of it. But they're not just aesthetics. They're actually practical and yeah. they're useful in that environment. And, but that is the most 1.0 thing of the product, right? Like, yeah, yeah. That is janky and it doesn't look as good as they wanted it to look or even that they've shown yeah, yeah, it yeah. to look. But the idea but, but, <laughs> is good. Like the I believe yeah. that idea is good. Like seeing someone's eyes when they are talking to you is important when they're in one of these products but it just it's it needs work but that doesn't matter because the idea is there yeah this is exactly what i mean is like i feel my brain split of i can give you a long list of things of like oh this eye stuff doesn't work great right but at the same time i feel like but it doesn't matter at all because it hits the thing that it needs to mm -hmm. which is oh i can know when someone's looking or when they're not looking or i feel like they're doing this on purpose that i can tell when they're sort of half looking like i swear it's like it seems like sometimes the eyes are cloudier when i can tell the person is going through a menu it's like oh they're not they're like able to see me but they're not actually looking looking at me and again yeah the fact that like it's obviously not what was intended or what was wanted from the original demos is not really important. Like, it never really matters in that moment when I'm watching somebody else use the product itself. It's a bit like in the 1980s when computers were first becoming home-use products. Like, individual families could buy a computer. And at the time, they were not intended to be mass consumer devices. They just couldn't be. Those old computers would have felt both, like, the same way, incredibly futuristic, but also sort of weirdly limited. Mm -hmm. Like, I just imagine that that's kind of an apt comparison here. And I've intentionally not wanted to watch or follow, like, any of the reaction to this. Like, the moment I put in my pre-purchase, I was like, I'm not going to listen to a single other person talk about this product until I get it in my hands. Like, I wanted to form my own thoughts on this. But I'm willing to guess that a lot of the conversation around this kind of implicitly or explicitly is talking about it as though it is like a consumer product or kind of like thinking of it in those terms. And I just don't think that that makes any sense as a way to judge it in the same way that you would not judge the first home computers of the 1980s as like mass consumer products. Like that's not the purpose they're serving. Obviously I have followed it. I think it's pretty balanced. I think some people are coming oh, at it from the perspective you're talking about, but really as a kind of like a warning as such, like if you are expecting this to be yeah. a consumer, it's not that. Right, right, right. Okay. And there are a lot of people who are also talking similarly of like, this is the future. Like even Apple is. So just before it went on sale, there was a Vanity Fair article where they spoke to Tim Cook and Greg Joswiak. And it's the first time an Apple executive has been shown wearing it. So there's like pictures of Tim wearing hmm. it. And one of the things that Jaws says is, it feels like we've reached into the future and grabbed this product. You're putting the future on your face. So like they are going mm. for that idea too, right? That like mm. this product, it's not now, it's what the future will be. But we have to start now to achieve that. And like that has felt that way since we first saw it. It's felt that way since I first used it. And I think that it has given on that promise in now its wider use. And the first couple of days online, you know, it felt like, yeah, there's a lot of jokes. Like, Haha, look at this person on the subway wearing one and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like what I'm seeing anyway is like the conversation is shifting more towards a general enthusiasm for the product and what it can do. And that is how I'm feeling just in general. Like I am an, a technology enthusiast. That's how I consider myself. It's how I've always mm. considered myself. This product feels like it has the most possible enthusiasm I could give something. Like, that's what I want for this product. Like, I want this to be encouraged. Like, it's so promising. And it's so interesting in the right moments in its current form. And I, I just hope, like, weird expectations around it don't cause problems for it as a product going forward. But yeah, it's just like, ah, uh, it's so interesting. So... As the person who originally got to try it a while back, how has it been for you getting your hands on one and being able to like, actually use it and not just be walk through a demo? My biggest concern 
is that my experience was going to warp my first impression. That like mm. having this moment that I had nine months ago was going to have like become a legend in my mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that I would be underwhelmed when I used it for the first time. But the actual great part of it is the demo that I had was so short and it gave me a taste of so few things. More has come since. I have had lots of wonderful moments with this over the last few days. And a lot of that stuff at first was like, oh, I remember this feeling. I remember what the apps look like. I remember opening things. I remember these gestures. Yes, this is very reminiscent. But then I was able to start playing around with some of the stuff that's new, like a lot mm -hmm. of the entertainment stuff. Something I was really keen on was the Disney Plus app because the Disney Plus app, they have built these environments that you can watch movies in, full virtual environments. And one of them was Avengers Tower. So <laughs> I opened the Disney Plus app. I went to the Avengers Tower environment and my mind was blown by it. Like I'm sitting and looking around and they've put all these Easter eggs of all these different movies and there's weapons all over the place and there's a big Hulkbuster Iron Man suit standing right there. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. And I was freaking out. I was, it was fantastic. And then I was like, all right, I want to test what 3D movies look like in this thing. So I opened up the catalog that they have. I chose Avengers Endgame. It was like, take me to the fight scene. <laughs> and like, I'm watching the whole fight scene play out. And honestly, it sounds so fun. It felt like a religious experience for me. It was <laughs> incredible. My mind was blown. It's so funny. I'm sitting in the hotel watching it. Adina's filming me mm -hmm. because I am freaking out. Like how incredibly detailed the environment looks, how fantastic the 3D looks with this huge screen and the spatial audio stuff flying past my head. Like it was in that moment I was like, yes, like this device has all of the experience that I felt in June. It's all still out there. Like this incredible fidelity and the overall experience that they've created, this like very natural feeling interface, it kind of bears out when used at large. Similarly, the incredible experiences that are available, there are still more of them and there will continue to be more of them. Like, mm -hmm. I've even been turned around on one pretty important part that I want to get to a little bit later on. So like my experience of using the Vision Pro for a few days, it's like, oh yeah, this is like everything. I, I remembered it being everything I hoped it would be within like being realistic i really mm -hmm. am like so pleased and so excited that it is what i wanted it to be i was worried about that same thing for you i was yeah. thinking like because it's easy to do the thing where you when you're remembering something is to also smooth over in your brain any problems that there were and then to extrapolate like the ability to do all of these other things yeah so I genuinely was thinking like, I wonder if Mike is just disappointed in this as a product. So it's interesting to hear that you you still have that experience of like, oh no, this is great. Because I, I was worried for you a little. <laughs> but I feel like I need to know more about what you have found, like what you have enjoyed. Like, why does this feel like an interesting product to you? Like what experiences or use cases have you been through in the last few days where you're like, oh yeah, this is good. I guess one of the things I want to try to put into words is that this feels to me kind of like the platonic ideal of what Apple does with products where they do products that are less but better at the same time or they're just focusing on a really narrow aspect of things and I do feel like, ah, I was entirely correct with my feeling um, when we were watching the first videos of it that like they're doing a very interesting thing here the way they're handling VR and AR is it's actually a fairly limited subset of things that they are attempting to do, but they're being really sure to make those things work well. Like at the time I described it this way, like I can see why this is not exactly right, but I feel like the idea of it is still correct. That it's like 
Apple is only trying to do a thing, which is putting rectangles somewhere. Like everything is a variation on like, there's a rectangle that's floating in space. Mm -hmm. Some of those rectangles contain 3D movies. Some of those rectangles contain your computer screen. Some of those rectangles contain widgets. Some of those rectangles are uh, Haleakala, like, but it's all different versions of that as opposed to trying to create like an entire 3D environment around you. And I think it was just like, like it's a genius simplification of what are we trying to do with this that... Again, most people will just never even know or think about because they've never had an experience in an environment like this at all. That's partly why like, I wanted to push back the show and wait because in some sense, like in my like initial reaction in some way is like, ah, I can see all the rectangles. Like I can totally see what they're doing here. And like I feel like my experience at the beginning was like a very comparative experience of like, ah, this is like this other thing. But over time, I sort of like let all that go and just accepted like, what are they trying to do with this and how are they trying to present things? And also what I said before, but things are, are sort of both better and worse in some ways. So it's like, oh, the, the pass through vision of like, you're looking at the world around you. It's like, oh, the resolution there is like not quite what I was thinking it might be. It's like, oh, it's clearly like I'm looking through a screen or like the way that I'm thinking about it. It's like I'm looking at the room that's around me. And it's a bit like I'm sort of wearing very lightly tinted sunglasses that are like a little smudgy is probably the way I would actually describe it. It doesn't look like I'm looking at the room. But at the same time, the effect is just so good. It doesn't really matter. And it's like a billion times better than anything I've ever seen like this before. What I found myself doing sometimes is quite legitimately like, oh, I can really just leave this headset on. And I'm working in my dad's office in this house. And I've been playing with the headset in there. And it's just, it really works. I'm like, oh, okay. And I can get up from the desk. I can go into the main kitchen. I can make some coffee and talk to my parents and interact with the dog. And I can do all of this while wearing the headset and it feels surprisingly natural like mm -hmm. that's the part that matters and i think like it can't be understated what a crazy achievement that is like i mean maybe i should or i shouldn't have been surprised but my parents have like a little back porch on the house and at one point my dad was out there reading and Without even really thinking about it, like I just went outside to see what he was up to. And I was like still wearing the headset and didn't even think about it for a moment. Like, oh, even outdoors in the sunshine, like it was totally fine. And I could just interact with my dad and then, you know, like come back inside the house and then go back to my desk all without ever taking it off. That is unbelievable that that can work and feel natural the entire time. Like it's shocking. Mm -hmm. It's shocking. Yeah. And, and that is like it's such a great example of what we've been talking about so far of like the fact that they were able to get it to be this good on a version one is yeah truly yeah. remarkable of an achievement yeah. that they were able to get it to look as good as it does where to me and this is another thing like this is exactly how i remembered it looking and i think i described it as the time as like what it looks like is you're looking at like a camera in low light you can mm. see everything but it's a little grainy mm -hmm. but you can see everything. It's fine. Like, in a way that I have not experienced with any other headset, right? Like, we're coming from our experiences with the Quest Pro, where, like, it feels like I'm just tripping out wearing that thing and trying to use pass-through. Like, I can see, but it's not comfortable. Like, I yeah. can see if I need to, but it's not like I'm going to choose to wear it when I'm not in an environment of some description or not in an app or a game. But you yeah. can do that with this. Like, it is comfortable. I'll give you a really good example that just happened. So I, I wanted to do a test of watching a, a 3D movie. So I was watching a movie uh, in, like, the mountain environment. So you're, like, on the snowy plains. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, and it's El Cap in front of you. It's, like, a nighttime environment. It's all dim when I'm watching the movie. And the way that the system works, which, again, works much better than I would have expected, it's not perfect, but when you raise your hand, you know, you see your actual hand in that environment. Mm -hmm. But the effect is more convincing when the lights are lower. So if you're in like this dim 3D environment in the headset, you don't notice the artifacts on your hands. And I had a weird moment of being like physically, kinesthetically confused for a moment. At one point when I was watching the movie 
and sort of moved around and saw my own hands. It's like I legitimately, for a moment, like couldn't tell where am I like physically because it like it looked so real. It was like a split second of like, no, but I'm not actually watching a movie like in the middle of this snowfield with this mountain in front of me. But it was like it was enough to trick my brain for a second into just feeling like, oh no, I'm I'm really there because it was my own hand. Whereas like every other time in VR, I've always said like, oh, your brain is willing to accept the reality of this world. But that's a very different feeling of like, oh, the sequence of polygons is my hand and my brain is just cool with that. Like, yeah, 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 that's your hand, whatever. It was a different feeling of physical placement in my actual body in an environment for a moment. And I just like, I couldn't believe that that illusion could even hold for a couple of seconds. It was really, like, I found it very shocking that that happened. But again, it just goes to, like, they're trying to do something different, and they're trying to do something that feels very natural, and they totally sold my brain. Like, I was really in that space, in that moment, for the effect to work under ideal circumstances. So I'm assuming, then, that this is, like, pretty ideal for you because my thought was the thing that will sell you is can you open obsidian in an environment and feel like you're in that environment because i know that that is so key to you like for things we've spoken about but with and without this headset of like going back to was it spaceship you yeah spaceship you right or was it starship mm. you which one was it <laughs> spaceship you spaceship you yeah, yeah. like the idea of tricking your brain in some way for helping you do work and this feels like the ultimate brain tricker is that your experience okay let's dispel with these fluffy feelings for a minute yeah and let's answer a real practical question can gray do work in this headset yes so i still have more fluffy things to say about this but you have zeroed in on the question that has been, I've, I've been like most desperate to answer. It's this question about the headset has the ability to bring in the screen of your computer to work on it. So traveling to America, I brought my absolute favorite computer ever, like this little MacBook Air. And I wanted to see like, okay, how does this computer in particular, like the greatest one to travel with, work with this headset? And so... You can pull the screen into any of these virtual environments or not. Just use it uh, like sitting at my dad's desk and, you know, just use the keyboard and the mouse sort of in this virtual space. Now, you're asking a slightly different thing, which is not entirely what I care about, which is like, does it feel like I'm using uh, my computer on the moon? That was not my primary concern. My concern is about the actual computer itself, like... How does this look? Can this be a, I was going to say a second monitor, but that's not really true. Can this be a single monitor to use? And the answer is sort of. So I've tried a few different kinds of tasks using my computer in this space. First kind of task, spreadsheets. So going through a bunch of spreadsheets, can I have a, a gigantic screen in front of me to work on like the biggest spreadsheet a man has ever worked on on the moon? No, the resolution is just not really there. It's like numbers are too hard of like there's too many things that look like too many others if you want it nice and big and to have lots of little rows. Like it's just not there. Have you tried the numbers app on Vision Pro? So I haven't tried the numbers app on Vision Pro. Because that would be clearer. I understand why you're saying that, but it's like I'm needing to switch back and forth quickly between like web browsers and the spreadsheets. It's like, how am I actually going to use a thing? I need to use it on the computer. I think it's worth trying, like, because you can have a web browser and you can have numbers there. Like, you know, I would be keen for you to try it at least. <laughs> okay, actually, let's do like a sidebar sidebar thing. So also, one of the things I did uh, very quickly after was like connecting my Bluetooth keyboard to the headset. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm going to use this keyboard in this virtual space. So, okay, funny thing number one. 
There's no setting for keyboard layout in the headset, so I can't switch the keyboard over to Dvorak if it's connected oh. to the headset directly, <laughs> which is, listen, if anyone who's on the development team is hearing me speak right now, it was surprising that it wasn't there, but it's like, of course it wasn't there. You've got 100,000 things to do before you worry about- The settings on the Vision Pro <laughs> is like Bizarro Land, because it looks like the settings app you know- but stuff's in different places and it's not all there. It's like, it's yeah. very peculiar. But again, I obviously, but it's like just a very strange experience. It's very strange because uh, yeah, the, the way it looks sort of prompts you to expect it to be like other things, but it's nothing like other things. So it's very confusing. But yes, I may be the first and only human on earth who's connected a yeah. Dvorak layout keyboard to the headset directly. So mm -hmm. like, yeah, don't worry about it, guys. Like, it's not a problem. Uh, I just thought it was funny as a thing that would never have occurred to me. But the, the other thing, which was a real like, oh, wow moment, like it just really felt like this is obviously a different computing platform is, of course... The headset has no concept of like, I need to command tab over to the yes. other app. It's like, command tab, uh, what are you doing? I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Because you're going to physically arrange these screens in front of you. That's what you're going to do. There's no command tab. Just look at it. Yeah, just look at it. Yeah, a lot of my friends have been complaining about the no command tab, which is like not even a oh, thing really? I thought about. Because it's huh, like, how okay. would that even work? Like... How would that work? It's going to like be throwing apps in front of your face? Here's why it felt that way for me. It was a moment that made me realize Command Tab has been such a fundamental way to use computers for my entire life. It was so jarring that nothing happened when I pressed Command Tab. Like, I can't even express it. I would bet they find something to do for Command Tab. Like, if you do it, maybe you can have a central window and it cycles through them. Just because I think that this is something that maybe it's like, we're not going to do that. This is spatial computing. You look where your windows are. But I expect yeah. they're going to get lots of feedback from people that this is something that to them is pretty fundamental. Like Spotlight is there, right? Like they kept Spotlight. And I think just in general, as this progresses, they will develop more sophisticated window management tools. Like there will be new things and maybe what that, keyboard command of command tab does might be yeah. different to what you're expecting it to do but it would do something and like yeah. i would not be surprised to see them do that but it was not a surprise to me at all that it was not in there and i think your reaction makes more sense also again from the like limited development time perspective i think it's the correct decision to not even try to do something like command tab because it feels like hey let's just go with what this thing is trying to do spatial computing yeah and yeah. force people to try to work like this for a while. And maybe we find out like ways we prefer to do things. Like, yeah. so don't try to do this. It's like, I have a very clear vision in my head of what I want to have happen when I press command tab on that headset. But it totally makes sense to just not have that as a thing. So the reason I bring it up though is because it does mean it's like, okay, so yes, you can put windows anywhere that you want to. But I feel like that has a very limited use for me practically because I don't want to be looking around a bunch and th this is where the like the limitation with the actual resolution matters because it's like you're always doing this trade-off between like size legibility smallness more is in your field of view but less legible like that's just a fundamental trade-off that yeah. currently needs to happen but like it was really cool for um one of the movies I was testing like it was interesting and unique that I could do a thing because for sort of like mindless work, I'm often like just like playing a video in the background. And on my computer, I have to pick somewhere that like, okay, which corner of the screen is this video going to steal and render useless while I'm doing this mindless work? It was really cool to be able to put that video screen instead above my laptop screen. And so like, yeah, I've like watched this video a hundred times before. I only just need it in my peripheral vision. I don't need it to take up any of the center space. So that was kind of awesome to have the movie above and like angled down at me. I've liked just grabbing it and put it to the side. So like I could just mm -hmm. look, glance up at it, but it's not even in my vision. And then what, what yeah. I love is the spatial audio. It sounds like it's over there, which is so cool how they do that, right? Like, I take the thing and I put it up and to the right and that's where it is. Like it just sounds like it's up and to the right. 
I've been enjoying that kind of stuff too. It's, it's cool. I absolutely loathe the spatial audio stuff. Like I never <laughs> want my audio to be spatial. But again, it's like, it's fine, whatever. But I, I do really hate that. It's like, it's just, I don't want the audio to sound like it's over there. Like I will never forget you and I, when I went out for a walk in the park once, did a phone call in the like the very early days of spatial audio and the audio effect was that like your voice was coming from my pocket where my phone was. And I was like, what the hell is this? Like, I hate <laughs> this so much. It's such a strange experience of like early buggier days of spatial audio. It's like, oh, no, we're, we're going to make it sound like you've got a mic in your pocket as you're doing this phone call. Like, no, I don't want that. But everything feels like that to me with the spatial audio stuff. OK, so all of that is just to say Spreadsheets is like the highest density of legible characters per square inch of screen that a person is going to do. And if you are working on a complicated spreadsheet, I just think that the headset is like, it's just not going to work for Mm. that, for the fundamental size of the characters. Okay, so next task down is something like research work for a video. Could I do research work for a video in the headset? This hits the realm of like, it's possible to do, but I think for, again, like window management reasons, I'm probably always still going to want to do this on the computer. Part of that is simply like, oh, I'm dealing with a huge number of things and their keyboard management of windows and tabs is critical. Like I need to be able to move between places functionally instantly without having to think about it. Like the look at a thing and press your fingers together to type like, Yes, that is great, but it is not the same thing as like processing a huge amount of information and going back and forth between stuff very fast. Like, Mm. again, right now, do I think that that can work? I could do it, but I think I would be doing that to try to do it in the headset, not doing it there because it's the optimal thing to do. Mm -hmm. But this gets us to the last category, which is... What if I'm just writing a script? What if I just open up Obsidian, I put it in the neon green writing mode, typewriter style. Destroy a retina. Uh, (laughs) It's what looks the best. (laughs) And if I bump up the text size like just a little bit, does that work? And I think that works. Is this using the Mac? Yes. I've loaded the Mac screen into the system so i'm mirroring my mac yeah and i'm just using the obsidian app and i've got a script open you really should try if you haven't already the obsidian ipad app natively on the vision pro (sighs) i don't want to open the can of worms about what syncing surface i'm using with obsidian again not today (laughs) the thing about that is and like so i recommend trying to get that to work it's not this conversation again me i had just decided that i'm never gonna try that again and i'm gonna stick with dropbox god damn you mike well so there is no dropbox <sighs> on vision pro which is i'm no, I so know. angry <laughs> about like i pay you a monthly fee to have my files everywhere you can just put the <laughs> ipad app on there and i can use it in the files app i'm so mad about this like very very <laughs> upset as a dropbox customer that they have not even done the very basics to make my subscription anyway but the thing is about what i'm saying about you know bumping up the font size that it, it's Look, crystal it. clear yeah, in yeah, the yeah. in the ipad app so if I one could make it like, work <laughs> i would recommend the it. reason i'm talking about the computer screen is just like mm-hmm. to me that's the most interesting thing because like the computer means there's no friction for any of your tools, like Dropbox, right? Like yeah, yeah. quickly accessing yeah, yeah. a thing. Like that, that's why I'm discussing I've been it thinking of it. Like the Mac thing, it's like an escape hatch. Yes, it's the escape hatch. And I want to know how well that works, yeah. Which is, I am so proud of them <laughs> that they did it, right? Mm-hmm. Because the Vision Pro is essentially an iPad. Vision OS is based on iPad OS. That was the starting block. And they have built it out from there. And there was this funny thing of like, this is the like, the multi-pad lifestyle, this is it. Because you can yeah, have like it, yeah, six iPads totally. in front of you, right? Is essentially what you've got. Each one's running. <sighs> yeah. Its own window is like an individual iPad app, right? Like that's like the idea. It's so funny. Like <laughs> it's like I take notes for the show and then I often like I try to compress them down and it's like whatever. And I, I tend to use a bunch of the notes. But the only like real one note line that I thought was like, ah, this is a thing is it did dawn on me like, oh, multi-pad lifestyle Mm -hmm. we were like sad that that just didn't work out in the way that we were thinking that it would because a bunch of like i think like weird things happened with the ipad line for a while and it was like in limbo land 
And it did just pop into my head because I kept thinking like, boy, this headset, it feels so much like an iPad without looking at all like an iPad in many mm-hmm. ways. And then it, it did just pop into my head. I was like, oh my God, this is it. This is the multi-pad yeah. lifestyle. Like in a way that we would never have thought like, holy moly, like it came back around. And it was just very interesting to realize that. With that super important thing that we never are going to get with the iPad, I feel like, which is worst comes to worst, one of those apps is your Mac. Yes, exactly. And yeah. the fact that they did the thing that mm-hmm. it has continuity and universal control that you can mm-hmm. use your Mac's keyboard and mouse and control every window in mm-hmm. like what is truly one of the most for me like magical computer experiences that I've had like I cannot fathom how they are doing it right like mm-hmm. how can I be using my Mac a physical object and I swipe right and it goes to the window in my Vision Pro that is to the right of my head. How on mm-hmm. earth do they know how to do this? Like, it is like for me a round of applause to the engineers who worked out that problem because mm-hmm. I just don't know, right? Like, how on earth do they know where all those windows are? Mm-hmm. I can move a mouse between all. Of- it's truly incredible that that works. I'm glad you had the same realization. Uh, it just it, it feels, vindication, uh, man. We got yeah. we got there in the end. Like the idea of multiple iPads, like that idea of like iPad apps, but lots of them, is yeah. something I don't know. It's going back to like the beginning of the show. We finally gotten it. <laughs> yeah, I'll also say it really feels like vindication because we both took a lot of flack from yes. a ton of people about mm-hmm. like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard, and it's like ah, and here it is. Mm-hmm. Like it just took a while. Listen, I understand why you're trying to get me to use the iPad app on the Vision Pro. I get it. They all look better. I just wanted to do it with my computer because I'm using Dropbox Sync and I also didn't want to switch over. But like, I wanted to do it with the computer so I could just know. Like, If I don't yeah. have to change everything else, how does this work? And I can do the thing of like, I can just stand up. It's so weird to look at the actual physical setup, right? Because it's like, oh, I just need to stand up and put my Bluetooth keyboard on a box facing nothing. (laughs) And then in the Vision headset, I can see the laptop screen and work on Obsidian and write on a script. It's like, boy, this works. Like, this totally works. And the next time I do a Greatcation, I am going to try it with taking the headset and not trying to do the whole thing of like, oh, I gotta make, I've got to make sure that I'm, I'm at a place where I can build a, a Jenga tower out of stuff so I can put my laptop at the top and see the screen so I can pace back and forth. It's like very interesting to think like, no, I don't need to do that. I don't have to try to get more uh, space, put like the laptop and the iPad next to each other balanced on top of all these things. It's like, no, no, no. I just need a place where I can put my keyboard at a comfortable height and it can be on a shelf in the room. And I, it's like, it can just do that. So I tested it out here and that works. And this is why, like, this also flows into the stuff that I said before. Like, there's so much that feels like, oh, I can talk about all of these limitations. Like, the resolution needs to at least double. Like, oh, there's all these things that I can want. But at the same time, the possibility of being able to use this on a work trip to write unbelievable like that is the thing that i hoped would be possible and it is and i cannot wait to try it out in an extended environment to see how does this really work over the space of like being in a place for 10 days and even if at the end of that i discover like oh maybe there's some reason why i decide i don't want to do this you can still see like yes but it is coming right maybe not this headset but maybe the next one but like This is now proof of concept that you can do this thing. And getting back to what you were originally asking me, it also means the physical environment that you are in can be less important because you can turn that environment up and it's just like, I feel like I'm somewhere else. 
The ability to stand right in front of a wall but not feel claustrophobic because in your experience, you're looking through it at Joshua Tree is amazing. <laughs> when you're talking about the resolution needed to mm. improve, do you mean of using the Mac? I mean the whole system. Really? Yeah, I mean the whole system. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing. I know I'm particularly sensitive to this. And for me, when Apple did that thing a long time ago now, where they had like the retina rollout, they were just like, we're doubling the resolution on all of our devices. That to me was a really important change that they made. Like I've, I value that so highly. And when I see even uh, like big computer screens that don't have retina resolution on them, like I don't understand how people can work on it. I just feel like, ugh, like that's terrible. So I, I do feel like I'm unusually resolution sensitive. So I feel like my opinion on this should not be taken as like a general thing. And I also understand that we're talking 4K panels in each eye. I want them to be 8K panels. Boy, is that going to be a long time coming. So I'm not expecting this as like a this has got to be their top priority thing. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a very, very long time before that happens. But yeah, on my own personal list of things that I would want to improve, the resolution is one of those things, yeah. That's just surprising to me. I want a higher resolution for the Mac screen, so that could be clearer than it is. Mm -hmm. But for everything else, like I don't, feel it at all but this is everybody has their as you said like they have your, your own personal like sensitivities to these things but it was the thing i was the most surprised about if like it's the first headset where i feel like i'm just looking at a computer screen mm. as opposed to looking at a vr screen yeah because i feel like i can just look at it and read everything and it's like to what looks to me is crystal clear as opposed to a bit muddy or whatever. I mean, I, I do feel like part of my reasoning for that is also like, I can see like things go blurry when I'm not looking at them. I can oh, see them doing the dynamic thing. Foveated of like, rendering. Yeah, the foveated rendering yeah. of like, you're looking here and we've just, we like blurred the edges a little bit because we don't have all the processor to do that. I feel like that is a thing where they are being very, very careful right now in how much of the screen they are rendering at one time for like power mm -hmm. and battery. I would hope, too, that that would change because I notice this the most when I'm looking at my Mac screen more than anything else, like the little blurred edges that it presents where you're not looking mm -hmm. in that exact moment, but you can kind of see out your peripherals. And it's more intense than how it is for your actual eyes, right? Because it's what our eyes do, but it's not yeah. that blurry. And yeah. I would like to see that improve, too. But these are those things where it's like, well, I know it will. Like, I know it will. Like, that's what makes this a version one? Like all of this stuff should and will get better. The thing that I'm thinking about is when you just press the little button on the headset to bring up the, the grid of apps that you're going to pick from and you swipe back and forth between those couple of screens, it just looks so good. Yeah, It looks like you have these little glass circles floating right in front of your, like, I don't know if they've spent more time on that, but I feel like that is one of the most convincing and natural effects in the whole of the headset is just those icons coming up when you are sitting in some space and moving back and forth between them. And I have caught myself doing a behavior that was the same behavior as when I got my first iPhone of like being kind of hypnotized of just yes. sliding back and forth between the two yep. screens. I did this when I got my iPhone 4 or whatever it was like. I would just slide back and forth and go, like, God, it looks amazing. And I'm doing the same thing in the headset. I'm like, this just looks so good. Just swiping back and forth between two screens of apps. <laughs> I think it's an example of what it's capable of. And that yeah. as time goes on, more and more apps and UI will, will take on this quality. Mm. The messages app looks really good. But yes, like yeah. notes doesn't look as good, right? But there no. are just like different apps. They lend themselves more to this effect, mm -hmm. right? Where like, just like notes, there's not really so much you can do about it. It's white with black text. Although I really wish there was a dark mode for apps, oh. which there isn't. <laughs> That's another one of these places yeah. where I like, I went straight into settings. Yep. Like where's Couldn't dark mode? Find it. The thing that really got me about it is it's funny that all of the environments have a dark mode. So it's like, oh, you can go to uh, White Sands and you can say, I want it in dark mode for the White Sands environment. So it's like, oh, 
it just led me to think, of course, there's dark mode somewhere, but there isn't. And I was like, man, that is actually high on my list of things that I really feel like they need to do. And I feel like they should do because, boy, if you are in a dark physical space to open up a notes app Mm -hmm. that is like the size of a small house in front of your face that is pure white is that is a jarring experience. I really feel like dark mode should be the default on this device more than any other device. Like develop things for dark mode. Uh, yeah, I was real surprised at that. And yeah. I was like, well, I will never use the notes app in this environment because of that. Have you set up a persona? Personas. Well, I have set up a persona. Uh-huh. I took one look at that thing, and I thought, I will not subject anyone to this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I have been king of hot takes with personas, right? Like, okay. I have been so anti-persona. I had mm. such a bad experience, and to me it seemed... Oh, yes, that's right. right? Yeah, you had a particularly it bad broke. experience with like, it. It, it broke, mm-hmm. and I was just like, this is stupid. This isn't going to work. I set up my persona. I did it a bunch of times. It was failing on me a little bit, but I, I got it set up. And overall, I got to say, I am so impressed with what they have done. It's an impressive technical demo. Yeah, I'll agree with that. The little amount of work that you have to do to generate something that in most cases looks... like I've seen various personas now across my friends. I've seen some people, it's like, that is uncannily good. And some mm-hmm. where it's like, what happened to your face, right? Like it seems, it just differs person to person. My persona looks just like me. Like it looks to me like what I see when I look in the mirror. Mm-hmm. I have an unfortunate problem where when I talk, my mouth doesn't move. There is an issue, it seems, with beards that they oh, are trying huh, to work right. through. Because when I'm talking, I don't think the cameras can clearly see my lips moving. Because of my mustache. Right, right, yeah. I have okay, been yeah, I can see that. told that that's the case. I have submitted information to Apple through the feedback system. This to me, again, is like, this is just a data problem. Like, mm-hmm. they will get better about the detection and the data. But I have spent, over the last few days, quite a bit of time doing persona FaceTime calls with my friends who have Vision Pro headsets. And this is maybe been one of the things I've been most impressed with. Once you get over the weird part, once mm-hmm. you are willing to take a trip down into the Valley of Uncanny, right? Once you're, mm-hmm. you're in there and you've accepted it, right? it feels to me like the perfect way to conduct something like FaceTime in this. It's like, you don't see yourself. Fantastic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But also, you don't have to do anything for the call If you don't want to shower before that FaceTime call, you ain't got to do it, right? If you don't want to put makeup on or do your hair, you don't have to because your persona is locked to a moment in time, right? And I've spent like time with Jason and Steven and Federico and John and we're just like, we're on a FaceTime call and then eventually we're just sitting there like poking around, working away. It feels like a very natural way to kind of co-work Hmm. because it's just a person who's just there and you can move them again wherever you want. And if you like spatial audio, it sounds really great because they're just kind of like moving around. And I know Apple's working on like another version of this called Spatial Personas, which I expect will make this experience even better. Like I'm actually quite impressed and my expectations are so low, it has way exceeded them. And I, Hmm. I do actually think there's something to it. Like I really do. Like... It's going to get better. People will get more used to it. Some apps will pop up. Like Zoom has a pretty decent implementation of it right now where it like it puts a different background behind you. So it's like you can be on a Zoom call and it looks not too bad. They've also said that they're working on a person-to-person kind of experience, basically similar to what we were getting with Horizon workrooms. Oh, okay. So like an embodied experience in some space? It's a bit vague, but they're talking about the idea of two personas being able to be in the same place and talking to each other in a space, right? Like Mm -hmm. a shared space. But it's not just going to be them working on this. So many people will. I'm really impressed with it. I know that naturally I assume you wouldn't like it, right? Yeah, of course. 
it's you and everybody knows now <laughs> right, you don't want to yes. be you see our previous conversations yeah. on this topic yeah but i think that some of the details of how they've done it i think they've knocked it out of the park i'm very very impressed with this we'll have to try to do our our next uh cortex brand call on mm-hmm. this yeah like i set up the persona i took a look at it and i feel like I guess for me, when I think about the FaceTime calls that I'm doing, I just don't have a scenario in which I can imagine doing the call in the headset. Well, but Um, except the exact one you just mentioned, right? The next time we have a call. Although, unfortunately, when I'm doing these, I have a great time. Everyone talking to me has a terrible time because... (laughs) It looks like my mouth's been sewn shut or something. It's it's very weird because you can see that my face is moving like I'm talking, right. but my lips don't move. It's very right. Unsettling. Okay, so we'll we'll hold off on that then until they unsew yep. your mouth. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like again, aside from you, I'm just thinking of like of all the the FaceTime calls that I do. I just I do not have the use case for this. Mm-hmm. So that that's why I was like, I just won't use this. I haven't done a single one of those calls. It's like, it's just, this is never going to happen for me. We may have the case for me where mm-hmm. this does make sense. Mm-hmm. I do still wonder about like, versus just a call because there isn't that embodied experience in this. But, you know, I'll have to see how it goes when we actually give it a shot. Yep. But so I agree. It's surprising how much fidelity they get out of just hold it in front of your face and look left and look right and smile smile at the shield and then you know raise your eyebrows or whatever like it does look good you know i'm not going to use it for the calls that i'm on but it is impressive it is impressive for sure so i have one more experience in the headset that i just want to talk about because Mm -hmm. with a lot of these things i feel like oh i've had like some version of this to try before but one thing that for me was just really novel and was a really quite emotionally shocking was watching 3d video for the first time in the headset it was so i opened up the photos app to be like oh let me just check this out i'm just looking through things and apple has uh you know their memories feature right with a like put together a little collection of photographs for you. And because you're in this headset, like you're in an environment, and if you've you've turned the dial all the way up, you've kind of like isolated yourself from the outside world. It's very quiet on the moon. It's very reflective. In this environment, even just regular photos, it's almost too emotionally powerful in this setting. That was very surprising. It was almost too much to click on a thing about like fun times in Hawaii, right? And like, then it plays you the videos and you're like watching these photographs. And then I remembered, oh, I shot a, I shot one (laughs) test 3D video to remember to have for this moment. And I'd like completely forgotten about this feature in like the excitement of everything else that was going on. So I click over to the tab of like, the spatial video. <laughs> and so this past Christmas, what I will describe as the dog who moved in with us and just like basically lives with us now. My favorite. Dog. He was with us. <laughs> yes, your favorite. He was there for Christmas and we had a guest dog in the house who's much bigger. And as, as always delightfully happens with dogs, they love to steal each other's bones. And so you have uh, this little dog runs off and like steals the big boy bone and he drags it off literally in front of the hearth to like happily chew on this bone. And I was like, oh, this is like a perfect moment to take a test video. Because I thought like, oh, we've got the objects. Like he's got the bone, which is in the foreground and he's in front of the fireplace and it's in the background. I was like, okay, I'm just going to record a little test video of him chewing on this bone. And now, of course, a video like this has everything working for it, right? It's like a cute animal. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas, right? But like, it was just too emotionally powerful watching this for the first time the most simple video it caused such a feeling of what i can only describe as like anticipatory melancholy that like i just like i couldn't even this is just too much in biology you talk about things as like like a super stimulus to me it's like the perfect example of just sure I could easily talk to you about how 
oh, obviously the frame rate is low on this thing, and the detail isn't great, and the 3D separation isn't perfect, and they're having to cheat at the edges with a bunch of fuzzing of the effect. I could talk about all of like the reasons that this is not technically perfect, but absolutely none of them matter for the emotional experience that this could convey. And I can now completely understand some of the comments that I've heard from other people where they said they watched like a like a demo of some of these spatial videos, somebody else's family in spatial video, and being overwhelmed with a feeling that they were watching something that's too private. Like, I shouldn't be watching this video. Or like, this like, put a memory in my head that's not mine. So like, this feature is shocking like just shockingly good shocking to experience and just very very powerful like it takes photos and videos and just turns it up even more and yeah. might even just turn it up too much yeah i agree like i took some spatial videos when we were on vacation i have a friend who works at apple and they were like you should do this to get ready and i was like okay i'll, I'll give it a go so we were going mm. away and i took a bunch and what i kind of learned for me is they're much nicer if you're stationary if you're moving it doesn't look very good right now so like that would be my tip to people but to be honest the biggest experience that i had emotionally was just looking at standard photos like just scrolling yeah. through the photo library and yeah. the sense of nostalgia that it gave to me is not like anything I've experienced before. And these were photos Completely. I had taken in the last four days. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at them and I'm like, that was such a good meal we had. It was, so, you know, because there's something about these huge images and it dims the background and it creates yeah. this like really warm feeling. And the photos from an iPhone just look fantastic at that size. I don't really know how. Right? Like mm. this photo that's probably 20 feet large or whatever. Like, I'm just, I was like laying back on the sofa and looking up at it at the ceiling and just like scrolling through them. It's like, oh, this is so wonderful. Like, this is not a reason to get one, but all of these things are like all of the reasons in which you would. And like, this is another of like, as a photo and video viewing experience, it's unbeatable. It is not possible to view and experience photos and memories in a more intense setting than this i feel like even with the additional days that we gave it's still not enough like <laughs> I, I look mike i completely agree i had to stop myself from messaging you again where i was like i don't know man should we do yeah. like i'm glad that we didn't it's the right decision to not like i cut myself off from that but i did have this feeling of I, like, I still want more time to process yeah. this, to really, I, I, I really feel it. I don't think there is an amount of time that we could have given that really realistically would have changed this. Like, this yeah. is a situation I'm having to face for my work in general, right? Like, I recorded Upgrade yesterday, I record Connected tomorrow, and it's the same problem each time. Like, me and Jason were talking over the weekend... And he was like, I, I don't know, man. I just don't know if I can do it yet. He's like, at least we'll be informed by you and Gray talking. And I was like, nope, we moved it. And he's like, ah! Because we were just struggling. I'm like, how do we approach this? It's so massive. And mm. this seemed to be a thing for like everyone that's had one of these, people that have had them for reviews, like you've been from like getting them from embargoes of Apple, like you've been seeing it. And like a lot of creators are producing multiple videos because it's too much to talk about all at once. And it's a slower, more gradual thing. I've not used this at home. My entire experience has been colored <laughs> yeah, by course, the idea of, course, of yeah. being in a hotel room, which has 100% made it better, right? Like, I don't want to be sitting and working, looking down at my laptop, my 13-inch laptop screen. I'm able to instead have a 30-inch screen for my Mac and then a bunch of windows all around. So, like, my experience is colored by that, which is positive, like, way more positive, mm, maybe, mm. than if I was at home where I don't need to use the Vision Pro to get a bigger screen for my Mac because I just have one at my studio, right? So, all of this is just a longer period of time this isn't like all right got a new iphone it does this it does that it does this this is what we think about it because there's with that so much context and like how do you use an iphone it's not a thing i need to explain to you right like mm. 
what does it look like to look at the Slack app on my phone? Like, you know, I don't need to tell you that. Where I can tell you, for example, like looking at the Slack app on Vision Pro is really good. And also it has this button, if it's an iPad app, where you can change it to be landscape or portrait, depending. Like, these are little details that it's just going to take a much longer period of time to tease this stuff out. And it's not like every episode of every show I'm going to do for the next three months will just be like continually reviewing the product, but it, we'll just keep touching back up on it. And I mean, while we were recording today, a friend texted me and said, Vision OS 1.1 is in beta now, which I'm happy about. They are pushing it forward. I'm actually very mm pleased about this like they're gonna start fixing and improving stuff because there's like a bunch of weird stuff like the keyboard the software keyboard which is bad but okay like it does the job for simple simple things but every time i use it it pops up in front of the text box that i need to see it's like mm -hmm. well, that's not right is it but like these are the things that just they're gonna like stuff's gonna get ironed out we're gonna have more experiences with it this is gonna be a thing that we'll be touching on forever now this is just part of it now this is just part of the computer experience for us but it's going to take a longer period of time to continually form our thoughts on it because it is so massive this is the most sensory overload i've ever experienced with a computer before where i'm like oh i want to do this thing and i always get distracted it's similar to you. I'm like, oh, I want to check out that app I downloaded. And I open the app picker and then I just scroll for a second and I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, that one looks... And then I do something else. <laughs> like, this has been my yeah. life for the last four days. I just can't settle yet. It's all too new, too overwhelming. But then also just the context of this. Not even the device itself. The pure context of what it means to have a computer like this that does the things it does is new in the way they are doing it. Like it has experiences, right? If you want to do a FaceTime call and like you have like a persona call, like you would a Horizon Worker thing, you can do that. You want to play some games? There's some games. They're not that great, but there's some games. Like there are things you know, but this idea of spatial computing is a new concept in the way that mm. they are doing it. And I still have not set on it yet. And it's just going to take longer than a week. 